my name's Penny Reeves. I'm 43 years old. Um, I've lived in Bristol all my life. I've got two beautiful daughters called Amber and Ruby. Um, Amber is 15 and Ruby's 10. Um, so as you can imagine, they're quite demanding, um, but lovely with it. And um, they've been, you know, a great support throughout what's happened with my illness. Back in the beginning of 2006, I was at a very busy time at work um, and didn't want to stop because my job is very important and I need to carry on with a smiley face with my children. And um, I had lower back pain and it was quite uncomfortable and um, I wanted to for it to stop and it just didn't stop and I went to the doctors um, three times in one week um, and I was given pain relief and, and things just wasn't getting any better it was getting worse I got to the point where I couldn't bend I couldn't put my own shoes and socks on um, so everything started to feel quite restricted around the lower spine area now I just had this image of I've just got a bad back, it happens, people do, I'll just get on with it. And that was most probably a big mistake that I made um, because the end of that week, I woke up on a Sunday morning and I couldn't walk. My right leg just stopped working and it was paralysed. I couldn't feel it, I couldn't use it um, and I hopped to the bathroom and at that point I still thought, okay, I've got a really bad back now. Um, and one of my friends who is a trained nurse um, came round to visit and said, why have you not called anyone? That's stupid. Um, and now I agree. Um, and we called a doctor, a doctor called an ambulance. And um, I got took to French A Hospital in Bristol who immediately did an MRI scan and realised that I damaged my main sciatica nerve by a, a prolapsed, shattered disc um, in the LRI5 region, so the lower um, to mid-back region. Um, and that had caused a lot of damage by the fact that I did ha obviously have a prolapsed disc, which then went on to shatter because I ignored the pain and covered it with medication. Um, and continued about my everyday life, really. It became quite difficult around the house to, to do everyday things. I couldn't actually work for six months and I couldn't cook and I would drop things and I, I couldn't take the children out um, and things did become quite difficult. I actually had a huge amount of problems sleeping. Um, I would have lots of sleepless nights. I just could not sleep or switch off because the pain just overpowered being able to switch off at night. What would then happen following the sleepless nights? Emotionally, I'd be so exhausted and that would affect everyday life, um, including, you know, not being able to function um, with just getting children ready for school because I didn't want to get out of bed. I felt so bad. I didn't actually go back to work for six months, which was the most amount of time I'd ever had off sick in my entire career. There is quite a misconception about how bad backs can feel. And um, people generally think that a bad back sometimes can be an excuse. And I was most probably one of those people um, 10 years ago. Um, and when you have got a bad back, it can be so serious and people really do need to understand and listen to their body and their pain. When I was going through the bad pain, the emotional side of things um, was really difficult and I'm the most upbeat, positive person I think you're most probably fine. So I obviously was able to deal with it a lot better than most in this condition. So I do really feel for people that suffer from depression and have to deal with everyday pain.